Hi, my name is Tom Holland and I um, write books about the antiquity, about the early Middle Ages as well. Um, I've written a book about the fall of the Roman Republic, so that's the period of Julius Caesar, and I've also written books about the end of the Roman Empire. Um, I've never actually written about Hadrian's Wall, which is where this, um, this wonderful tombstone comes from, but I have walked it three times. Um, so I feel that this is the kind of app that I would really have enjoyed having with me. So let's have a look. Regina's tombstone on what looks a hauntingly atmospheric Northumbrian beach. Um, and woohoo! Up comes some information. It's a bit like um, a bit like Mist. <laughs> Do you ever play Mist? Start painting. And I guess the point of this is that um, to remind people that um, statues weren't just marble or left unpainted, and that what we see the painters faded from. Uh, it brings up a handsome picture of Verolini, St Albans, which is where Regina came from, presumably sold into slavery by her family. So, oh, when I press this, oh, and here's the inscription. So here's the Latin inscription. Um, and it's, <laughs> this is making tr inscriptions fun. And here we, it comes up to the spirits of the departed and to Regina, freedwoman and wife of Brates of Palmyra. And that's the fascinating detail of the Catafalani tribe. So um, here we have the most multicultural of weddings. Um, Assyrian, Barates, probably in the army, could have been a trader. People aren't entirely sure, although the amazing detail is, and I guess that this is what it will tell us if we click on it, that yes, so a tombstone for a Palmyra man called Barates was found at Corbridge, which is on Hadrian's Wall. So, I mean, that's the amazing detail. And the wonderful thing about this app is that we're aware of the amazing coincidence that these two tombstones have been found, the wife and of the husband but it's it's wonderful to have them both ready to look at with a single tap of the finger what was Barates doing in England it's a very good question he may have arrived with the legions of the Emperor Septimius Severus so let's have a look at him Septimius Severus there he's looking bearded and Roman um, even though he actually came from North Africa which I guess yep and there we go and there he is, actually looking a little bit more, more North African. He was born in Leptis Magna in present-day Libya. Um, and there's a story that there was a huge statue of him um, in Tripoli uh, when Colonel Gaddafi was ruling Libya. And Colonel Gaddafi was absolutely furious about it because he felt that it was upstaging him. So he ordered the statue removed from Tripoli, the capital, to Leptis Magna. Um, so he wouldn't have to look at it. And then several years later, he was asked to open the museum in Leptis Magna and turned up in his car, saw this huge statue of Septimius Severus standing there and again ordered it to be removed. And I have no idea what, what actually happened to it and whether now that Colonel Gaddafi has fallen, whether maybe Septimius Severus is back. But he certainly remembered um, on Hadrian's War because Septimius Severus led... Um, what I think could probably best be described as a near genocidal policy of, um, with the aim of pacifying Caledonia, what's now Scotland, um, incredibly brutal, uh, which failed, luckily for the Caledonians. Coming from Palmyra, so let's click on that, and up comes Palmyra, which it has to be said, this is um, not a place it's going to be easy to visit at the moment because it's in Syria and um, quite a lot of disturbing reports about the damage that might be being inflicted in the civil war that's going on there. Um, but this, I guess, enables you to maybe visit it. It does. Up comes the Sanctuary and Temple of Bel, which is a stupefying monument. Um, and there's text here, so that will tell us about it. It tells us Bell was who Bell was worshipped with. 
what the architecture is, what it looked like when it originally existed, and so. And I have to say that just just looking at this map really it takes me back to visiting there, and I imagine that it would make anyone want to go there. And it's I mean it's such a shame that that's just not possible at the moment. And I suppose the real the real nightmare would be if the fighting seriously damages the site. So there may be a sense in which this is actually um, it's not just showing you things as they are now, but perhaps it you know it will serve as a, a record of buildings that may well end up damaged or even heaven forbid destroyed. So there we go, a little bit of text. Palmyra took a very prominent role in the history of the Roman Empire. Um, it's Queen Zenobia, and here we get Queen Zenobia and the rise and fall of Palmyra. And there she is, Zenobia and her son Vabalathus. I, what I really wish is that, um, is, that <laughs> is that every statue or tombstone or antiquity that you are liable to see in a museum had an app like this. Um, I mean, that's always the way of technology, that the moment you get one thing, you want more. Um, but I, I think that this is incredibly valuable, um, both as an introduction. I mean, it's fun just to, to have it, um, to explore, to experiment, to have your eyes opened. Um, and it's always the fun of anything, I guess, you know, on a screen, is whether it's a game or whatever, is the chance to chase things down and to hunt pieces of information through a program is as in a book but it would be great to have <laughs> more of these please <laughs> maybe for um the major antiquities of roman britain and you could take it wherever you went it'd be a wonderful update of a guidebook um this wonderful thank you